also I'd love to judge you because if this is not what your tier list look okay look let me be a little bit more fair I'll be a little bit more fair what are you saying let's do paladins can go B because I do have a paladin kind of enjoy it druids uh, A because I, I, I have a druid and I kind of like it but then again I don't really play it all that often mm. felt like it was much easier when I wasn't thinking about this Warrior actually has to go here because I love my warrior. No, actually, fuck it. Alex, cut the video there. That's it. My tier list isn't this. My tier list is... Uh, if I start thinking about this, I'm going to overthink it. And the truth is, this is all I want. I have an idea. What about tearing it with class black background after? You mean the story of the classes? Huh? So you mean the lore of the different classes? Is that what you mean? Huh. Class fantasy is definitely a very different list. All right, I'll be, will, I'll be willing to do that. I'll do that. So we're changing the game here. We are now looking for class fantasy in World of Warcraft. I still believe that Warlocks go in S tier. I love the background and fantasy of Warlocks. Um, I love the history of the Warlocks. I specifically love Warlock history before it kind of got retconned and, and sort of changed. Because the, the origins of the Warlock history actually explains creatures of incredibly dark power that, that would commune with demons. And um, they used to be shamans that, that started this communal process with demons and this led them to this incredibly dark path that they're on. So I definitely love Warlocks being in S tier um, as a class fantasy. The other S tier classes from a class fantasy perspective so purely the backstory of those classes i'm gonna have to say dk the the story of the dks is phenomenal well fleshed out and also happens to be a story that we saw in game like we literally saw how the demons were created uh, or the dks were created at the time uh, specifically in terms of the DKs that we play today, not so much the DKs that was part of the the, the invasion, invading force of Azeroth, uh, as it were. Is there any other classes that I would put S tier? I don't know. So what about mages are we putting in, in, in S tier? Are we putting the history of mages in general in World of Warcraft in S tier? Or are we looking only at the origin story of mages? As someone who prefers darker stories... I think mages wouldn't be S tier for me purely from a story perspective. It would be high A. But if we're looking only at the general story of mages within the, the game and their history and impact within the game, I guess I can understand what you guys mean. So we'll put that in S tier as well. I feel like the other classes don't really have that level of storytelling, at least for me. The shaman story never really agreed with me, Adelia. I never really cared for the Shaman story all that much. No mention of rogues and I'm getting triggered. We're not at the rogues yet. You can calm, calm your tits. We'll get there, I promise. So Demon Hunters, I would actually put A. The story of their creation, although I have to say the story of their creation also triggers me a little because it did, it kind of changed things a little bit with Illidan. Um, but did it change things with Illidan for the worst? I don't think so. I think the changes were actually done nice. So I could I could put it high A. I think Demon Hunter's going high A fairly good. I think A is... I almost think A is a little bit undershooting it. So I don't think I need to explain my reasoning behind Warlocks and DKs being in, a, in S tier. From a story perspective, there's the Warlocks is like a, a, a stupidly long, uh, an old story. Their influence on Azeroth literally led to so many of the problems that we deal with every single day. So Warlocks are sort of spewed into much of the story that we have in World of Warcraft in general. The DK story is tied to Arthas, need I say more. The mage story, what makes the mage story so interesting is not only the story of Khadgar and Medivh and, and you know, the entire basically history of World of Warcraft as it were, but also the stories of Ajara and, and Illidan, you know, uh, characters or, or, you know, NPCs that were supposed for all intents and purposes to be something else, turning out to be incredibly powerful mages. Illidan was supposed to be a druid. 
And for some reason, Druidism just did not speak to him. In fact, for those of you that don't know the retcon lore around Golden Eyes, it was believed that Golden Eyes, this was the original lore, that Golden Eyes was a sign of very powerful Druids. This is why people started to say, but wait a second, the only two characters we know of in World of Warcraft that had Golden Eyes weren't Druids. They, they were mages, and very powerful mages at that. Like, at least they had a very powerful affinity for arcane magic. And so it got changed, and Blizzard sort of went, okay, never mind. Uh, it's actually, it means someone with a great destiny. Uh, so that's what it's going to be now. Um, I don't think demons are on that level. Demon hunters. I don't think they're on the level of the three classes in S tier right now. Next one is Hunter. Chat, where do you put Hunter? I'm going to be honest. In terms of story, I don't think Hunter should move from D tier. In terms of pure fantasy, Hunters are pretty fucking boring. <laughs> oh, nice. You can shoot some deer and feed the village. Yay. Yay. From a fantasy standpoint, not that good. I, I don't. I would not say that hunters stand out to me as being noteworthy. From a pure fantasy story. Wait, Savannah is a hunter, eh? Savannah is a ranger. Well, I guess hunter, technically, same thing. She was boring when she was a hunter. Now we have to include the stories of hunters. And this is where we get into Rexar things. We get into Sylvanas things. Um, we even get into things like Nathanos' story. So ultimately, once you start including all of those stories, D tier starts to feel not that great. Right? It feels like D tier is, is too low. If you include the impact that hunters whilst that that impact wasn't specifically because of them being hunters they were still hunters when they did what they did and how they influenced the game so i would put them either high c or low b for now let's keep them in high c we'll talk about it at the end when we figure out the rest of the classes the next one is Monk. I want to go B. Not because specifically their story was bad, just because it wasn't that good. I mean, it's a fine story, but at no point did I find their story interesting enough to where I felt like I really wanted a Monk. And remember, we're not talking gameplay here. We're not at all focused on gameplay. We're talking purely about story. So we can either look at the backstory of the class or about the significance of the class in terms of overall storytelling. But we can't look at gameplay. Gameplay does not matter. It, it's only about the story. And for that, I sort of want to put monks in B tier. Because their story just did not resonate with me in general. I did not like their story. So I'm going to go for B tier right now. We'll revisit it because it is high Bs. It's not low Bs. This would be a high B. Priest. If you're going to be a... if you're if Look, if you're going to be a priest, you may as well go the extra mile and be a paladin. Either you can be a useless fucking address uh, healing some people or be a, a useless fucking some plate armor and hit some people in the face. <laughs> so I don't, I don't necessarily know. Oh my god, we have to include Shadow Priests as well. I, I, for a second, forgot that there is such a thing as Shadow Priests. Uh, and Shadow Priest's story is actually quite good. I would say, if you do Shadow Priests alone, it is an easy A. But you can't do Shadow Priest alone. Because it's not just a Shadow Priest. There's Holy and disc as well and for that and that alone i think it brings it down to low b's it might even be fucking high c 
yeah, I think B is a good place. The story for priests isn't really wow, but it's also not complete dark shit. It's sort of okay. It's an okay story. It's not the greatest story, but it's also not the worst story. So I think B is 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 average, and that's fine. Um, Voicey has already said it would be low Bs, high Cs. Because it's both compared to the spec and the stories around them. I think C is more appropriate. Let's, let's keep going with the list, and then we can decide if we think we have to make changes right at the end. Shaman. Now, I kind of have to put Shaman high, and here's why. My original love for Warlocks would not be possible was it not for Shamans. In fact, a lot of World of Warcraft would not be possible was it not for Shamans. Their story and their influence within the story is pretty well known. Apocalypse, you do have a good argument there. Do we go by shamans in books, shamans in game, or do we go by shamans overall? So we go with shamans overall, which I gotta say makes it high A's, low S. We have Nurzul, which is like a, a huge part of the story that really kickstarted a lot of the story. We have a lot of the orcish history and the second war very much mired in what shamans would ultimately do and what shamans would become. I think A, behind Demon Hunters, they're not as, their story is not as good as Demon Hunters. So for now, let's do it middle of the pack A, maybe even low A. So let, let's keep them there for now. Rogue. I'm kind of tempted to keep Rogue on D. The question is, does the class fulfill the class fantasy portrayed by their heroes? Voicey, right now we're not really getting that deep into it, because that would be a very diff difficult fucking thing to get in on. Now, no hate to the rogues out there, but from a story perspective, rogues don't have... Uh, their story is not memorable. It's basically just... If you couldn't, if you didn't have the talent to become any of the other classes, you wait to go train as a rogue. Like that, 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 that's kind of the, that's kind of it. Like you, you didn't have any demonic powers, so you couldn't be a warlock. You had no death affinity, so you couldn't be a DK. You had no arcane affinity, so you couldn't be a mage. So then you just basically settled to become a rogue. I would, I would keep rogue in D tier. I'm sorry, but yes, druids. Now, here's where I think we're going to get some contention with chat. Where do druids go? F. Holy shit. Honestly, A or B. So now I have to ask a question. Are we going to talk about druids insofar as the potential of their story? Or insofar as the portrayal of their story? Because those two things change their rating completely. If we're talking potential story for druids, so the story that was hinted at and sort of in some ways displayed in the box, that puts it A tier. If we're talking the actual story as implemented by Blizzard, because a lot of what the story in the books show was sort of effectively retconned within the game, that makes it low b's high c's from a story perspective malfurion is supposed to be an absolute demon and yet in the game consistently fucking useless consistently useless scenarius supposed to be a demigod super fucking powerful crazy fucking cool in the game Pretty much fucking useless. So we could say, yeah, but in the books, dude, remember we did speak about the books when we were talking about shamans. Um, so we have to look at overall. And I would say, well, the difference here is a lot of what the game showed really fucking 
replaced what the book showed. Gokart, the problem with Illidan is Illidan was never a druid. While Illidan was training to be a druid, Illidan never became a druid. So you can't really include um, Illidan within the druid storyline. Now, the Emerald Dream could definitely be shown, but again, the Emerald Dream as a story was never really has never really been explored all that much. It's only a mention right now. So I, I don't know if I can put it A. The main reason I would say Druids are A is because they buffed a whole other race and class. I guess what we do have to keep in mind is that while Night Elves are not specifically Druids, the entirety of the history of Night Elves is f literally entwined with Druids. And that is something that I think we have to keep in mind with this, with this tier set. And based purely on that, which I literally just remembered, low ace. Say what you will, but the story of the Night Elves in the context of Elven society makes it A tier. All druids do is screw everyone over and get their asses kicked. Can okay, ma maidenless and turn into a demon hunter. So paladins over our S tier. We'll we'll get to that. Jack the Druid, the Nightborn, uh, well, not in whole druids. The Druid Council banished them. I would say the Druid, look, there's a lot to the Druids that needs to be kept in mind. And I think the Druid story is as impactful to the story of World of Warcraft as many of the other classes that we have in the S and A tier and even in the B tier. I think the Druids are more interesting than Monks and definitely more interesting than Priests, which is why I think they deserve low A tier. Because I don't think the Druids are less interesting than Monks, Priests, Hunters, or Rogues. As I said, I think this is going to be a contentious one. And I can understand why a lot of people don't agree with this, and that's fair. Make your own fucking tier list and share it on Discord. Uh, simple as that. All right. Paladon. Pa Paladons. Here's what I think we should keep in mind when it comes to the Paladin story. Almost every single iconic character that has been present with, let's say, 75% or 80% of everything that has happened in World of Warcraft almost ever had in some way, shape, or form paladins involved. Arthas was a paladin before he became a DK. Uther is an incredible fucking paladin. The story of the light, the, the, the story of the blood elves and how they became uh, paladins, all of that is incredibly interesting and also impactful to the overall story of World of Warcraft. So I do think that if we're going to put Paladins anywhere, it has to be A or S. The only question is which one of the two. If we're talking purely about their influence on the story. I mean, I've long since given up on my investment in the story. Because if it was only about my investment in the story, then it would be Warlocks, DKs, Mages, everything else D tier. If, if we were only talking about my investment to the story. So all of these classes so far, I have judged based on how they've moved the story forward, what they've done for the story in general, what their role was overall, and then also my enjoyment of the story. If it's story, gameplay, they go down to A. We're not talking about gameplay at all. I want to say I agree with people that say put them sort of on the same scale as shamans. Because I think, actually, I'll put them like this. Because I think their involvement in the story is about equal to that of the shamans. And it's not a horrible story to go through. Like, if I sat here and I told you the story of the paladins, you wouldn't go at the end of that, God, that was fucking boring. Yeah, well, paladins are obviously under DK. That's not even a question. Last question... And I think I know the answer to this, but I'll ask it anyways. I'm contractually obliged to, to ask this. Warrior. I'll say this. If you have Warrior anywhere higher than D, I want what the fuck you're smoking. 
If you have it any higher than D, I want what you're smoking. From a story perspective, warriors <laughs> may like they're they may as well not have a story. It barely matters. All right, Varian. I, I, I get what you're doing. Varian is a decent counter, but I would say one warrior a story does not make. Every single grunt or foot soldier out there is a warrior. They belong in SS plus tier. All of those dudes are warriors. Sargeras, Proxigar, Varian, Black and Doomhammer. Easy fucking S. So you guys are trying to save warrior purely by listing all of the incredibly powerful and impactful warriors of the time not so much based on their personal story but rather based on what warriors were involved in whilst moving the story forward that's an interesting approach because for all of these other classes we can make an argument purely for their story even excluding the powerful characters within the story we could still make a case for that story what you guys are doing here is you're saying we should we shouldn't worry about the individual story of warriors in general but rather on the notable warriors in the game and their involvement within the story because from that perspective i can see where you guys are going okay well frodo the rogue snuck into mordor oh so we're now not even fucking looking at games anymore we can go cross fantasies here for warriors no i think we have to be fair i think we have to be fair i, I don't know how, wh how why would you increase rogues if you only base it on characters because it's not alex i'm not basing warriors on how cool the characters are i am basing warriors on varian's involvement in the story was impactful gromash um broxigar uh what the fuck why am i blanking on his name now I won't apologize, dude, that fucking screamed off the top of his lungs. Um, Garrosh. Those were all very impactful stories, and all of them were warriors. So they had a lot of importance, I would say. And in this instance, all of those characters, their attitudes, the way they were, was because they were warriors. Garrosh's attitude of, I don't give a fuck, I'll do what I want and I'm unstoppable. Varian's uh, sort of foolhardiness and just absolute willingness to blow in anywhere is all because of their the act that they are warriors. So very much them being warriors impact how they approach the story. Purely from class fantasy story. Alex brings up a good point here, people. Alex brings up a very good point here. We are basing it purely on class fantasy. We can't simply base it. So it's fine if we also use how they move the story forward as figuring out exactly what rank they have to fall on, but it has to start with class fantasy. And in that regard, the only argument I can make for warrior class fantasy is warrior history the long lineage of very powerful warriors. I don't know if that's much of a class fantasy. I'm going to be very real and honest with you guys. The the warrior class order all was Odin. Like they, they didn't even go to the birthplace of, place of warriors. They, they went to a god that makes his own halls with his own people who become his warriors. So I, I wouldn't... I, I don't think necessarily... I don't think warriors have much class fantasy. Well, Sapphire Echo, he was another badass. But like I, like we already said, we can't just base it on bad, badass characters. We can take into account. So what we've done every single time with the, the previous characters here, we looked at their fantasy first. And then if we decided that their fantasy is really good, then we start looking at notable characters and their influence on the overall story. But it has to start with class fantasy. I feel like if you already don't have that much of a great class fantasy, you can't go into the A's or the S's. I I'll hear arguments for B, C, or D, but I will not hear arguments for S or A. Because the story of Warriors is pretty fucking boring. 
If I told you the story of Warriors, excluding all of the main characters that played Warriors, you'd be bored. Be honest, it would be pretty boring. If I didn't tell you about any of the main cast of Warriors, it's a pretty boring fucking story. So here's a guy with an axe and he can swing it really fast and hard. That's basically it. It's basically the story of Warriors. It's not, look, it's not to say that Warrior stories can't be good. It's to say that Blizzard never really focused on the Warrior stories. Blizzard never, never really fleshed out a history and fantasy for Warriors. It, it has the ability to be good if Blizzard actually spent some time to fucking develop it. But right now, the fantasy is pretty shite. So I think... It stays where it is. To be clear, I I love my warrior. I love playing my warrior because my warrior plays exactly to the fantasy that I want from it. When I play my warrior, I want to smash things and I want to feel like I'm smashing things. That's it. That's what I want. That, however, does not mean that the fantasy of the warrior is fun. It just means that I want to be a madman that jumps in and does a bunch of things. That's it. That's fucking all I want. Let's see this clip. <laughs> what am I doing? I don't know what the fuck I'm doing there, but hey, um, <laughs> we'll share it. I have no idea what I'm doing there, but hey, let's just fucking roll with it, I guess. Enjoying the chat. Yeah, probably chat said something that triggers me. Look, this is it. That's it. It's uh, Warrior Mass to go on D tier. The lore of Warriors, the fantasy of Warriors is just boring as shit. World of Warcraft does do one thing great. They match the what you expect for a Warrior very well with the class. Warriors play exactly the way you want them to play. And that's perfectly fine. But as far as their story goes, the story of Warriors is boring. It, it, it's, it's fucking boring. Um... That doesn't mean that there aren't really cool warrior characters in the game, but the characters alone cannot carry it. The characters alone cannot carry it.